Hi, this is David Harper of Turtle with part two in a review of the credit metrics model, which is a credit risk portfolio model. In the first part, we looked at how credit metrics treats a single bond. And now I'd like to look at the second building block in credit metrics, which refers to how does credit metrics combine bonds into a portfolio. So this is a little bit more advanced. This is really from FRM Canada customers. And we start with the key ingredient in the credit metrics model, which is the transition or sometimes called a migration matrix. To illustrate, I'm going to assume our portfolio has only two bonds, an A rated bond and a triple B rated bond. Triple B is the lowest rating a bond can have under the S&P system and still be investment grade. So here are the two bonds and recall what our transition or migration matrix means. It means that if we start the year today, that would be time zero, here are the probabilities that the bond will migrate to the different rating categories. So our triple B, as we would expect, has the largest probability, almost 87% chance, of remaining a triple B rated bond over this one year period. And there's a 5.3% chance there will be a downgrade by the end of the year and an almost 6% chance there will be an upgrade. Further, we've seen that this row constitutes what Guarty would call an empirical distribution. Each of these probabilities are mutually exclusive and cumulatively exhaustive, meaning they cover all the possible outcomes, so their total, they are a probability distribution, and their total is 1.0 or 100%. So we've characterized both of the bonds with the transition matrix. Then we come to the first key substep of this second building block, which is here I'm taking the, I'll move this up just a little bit. Okay, here's the double B rated bond that's in the portfolio. And here are the same transition probabilities. I just transposed the row in the, in the matrix right here to a column right here. And then simply converted these into cumulative probabilities because what we're going to do here in this step is map the transition probabilities to a standard normal distribution. And what this means is if I start down here at the bottom, 0.2% equals the 0.2%. And that's really this 0.18 here rounded. And what's that mean? Again, that means there's a 0.2% chance the triple re-rated bond will default by the end of the period. And cumulatively, here that 0.2% is the same value. This 0.3% simply adds these two values because what it means is by the end of the year, there's a 0.3% chance that this triple B rated bond will be downgraded to triple C or worse to default. Similarly, the 1.5 adds these three, 6.8 add these three. What's the 6.8% means? It means Starting today, the triple B rated bond has a 6.8% chance of migrating or being downgraded to junk status or worse, including default. So these are cumulative transition probabilities. And of course, since this row is a probability distribution, there's a 100% chance here at the, big, at the top because this triple B rated bond has a 100% chance of migrating to triple A or below. So that's all possible outcomes. Now, the very simple elegant step here in credit metrics is to map those cumulative probabilities to the standard normal distribution. Notice I'm saying standard normal distribution, meaning it's a normal with mean of zero and variance and volatility of one. And so all that, all we do there is the norm S inv function because that converts our cumulative probability or what we sometimes call a CDF into what we sometimes call a normal deviate or critical Z value. So here at 1.5% chance, that means a standard random normal variable has a 1.5% chance of falling 2.18 standard deviations to left of mean. The exact same exercise is conducted for the other bond, the A-rated bond. It has, it has its own transition or migration probabilities, which translate into cumulative probabilities and can be mapped directly to standard normal deviates. So just to graphically to show that with the A-rated bond, 
here is the probability that the A-rated bond remains A-rated, 91.9% chance over the year, and cumulatively, that's 97.6% chance, meaning the probability that the A-rated bond will either remain A-rated or be downgraded. That corresponds to a normal deviate of 1.98, which is right here on the standard normal curve. 1.98 standard deviations to right of mean. Then right below that, we have a cumulative probability of 6.6%. What does that mean? That's the probability that the A-rated bond over the year will be downgraded to triple B or worse. And that corresponds to negative 1.51 or 1.51 standard deviations left of mean. That's this part right here. And so if we think about the standard normal uh, distribution, we've carved out here space in the middle. Here, this to the left corresponds to cumulatively that the A-rated will remain A-rated or worse. This here is the threshold for the A-rated bond being downgraded or worse. So if we think of the random variable characterized by the standard normal distribution, and if it falls out anywhere in here, in this area carved out by the red lines, then we have described the probability that the A-rated bond will remain A-rated. And if we draw samples and randomly get out here to the right tail, we're going to be more than two standard deviations to the right of mean. And randomly, we're going to be describing a situation where the A-rated bond is upgraded. If we get over here randomly in the left tail to the left of negative 1.51 standard deviations, we're going to be randomly characterizing a situation where the A-rated bond was downgraded to triple B or worse. So the elegance of this is that we've remained faithful to the transition probabilities, but we've managed now to, the, to describe this bond with a standard random normal variable, which is very convenient for us. So we can take a look at the final step, and this is going to be more conceptual than, um, than following through. But uh, what we can now do is use the joint or bivariate normal distribution that I looked at yesterday to characterize a transition matrix that describes both bonds. And this is how credit metrics gets from a single bond to a portfolio of bonds. Now we can say, what is the joint probability? For example, let me copy this cell right here, 6.4%. This is a cumulative probability. What is the joint probability that our B-rated bond remains B-rated and, that's the joint part, our A-rated bond is downgraded to a triple B? And this is cumulative, so these are all less than. But the point is, now that we've taken each bond and characterize the first bond with a random standard normal variable and the second bond with a random standard normal variable. If we add a correlation, we can characterize their joint probability of migration by a bivariate normal distribution. And so that's what this means right here. Here, this 91.7, it jumps over here because this is a cumulative probability. There's a 91.7% chance that the that the triple B rated bond will remain triple B or worse and the A rated bond will remain A rated or worse. And so what the credit metrics has done sort of elegantly is take individual transition probabilities and map them to standard normal variables and then used a bivariate normal distribution such that we can create a migration matrix that now does not just characterize a single bond, but characterizes the joint probability of migration. So I hope this was helpful. This is David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.